All right. So I'm here with Franco Terrazano. He is my friend and the federal director of the CTF. So Franco, after all these uh, denials of nothing to see here, folks, CMHC and this group at UBC comes out with this brand new study pushing a surtax on the sale of our homes. So what's the deal with this report? What are they pushing? Before we get into the report, Simmer, we have to remind our audience that the CMHC is a federal crown corporation, right? So what does that mean? It means we just saw the Liberals and the Conservatives run around during the fall, during that election, promising Canadians, don't worry, we're not coming after your homes. Now we find out that the federal government was using our tax dollars to dream up new ways to hammer Canadian taxpayers and Canadian homeowners. Now, what's so bizarre is that this report was supposed to look at ways to reduce housing prices, but the big mines funded by the CMHC, uh, they are actually recommending an annual tax on Canadian homeowners whose value is above a million dollars. Now you wouldn't have to pay it until you sell the home or the house is inherited, but that tax bill would increase year after year after year and simmer. It could mean thousands and thousands of dollars for Canadian homeowners. Yeah, for sure. Uh, that blew my mind that they went through all this foo for us saying nothing to see here. We're not looking at it. No way. <laughs> it's like, guys, we can see you. Yeah. This is a study. It's funded by CMHC, which, like you say, is a crown corp. And it's pushing for higher taxes on the sale of our homes. Like this is what a home equity tax looks like. So what are the details of this specific report? They called it a surtax. Well, as I mentioned, it would hit uh, homeowners whose home is valued above a million dollars. Yeah. Um, but we have to remember here, that's not just going after these big fancy mansions. For starters, they estimate that this tax would hit 1.3 million Canadian homeowners. But let's look at reality here. If you own a home in Vancouver or Toronto, I mean, this tax is likely going to hit you. We were looking at some data from the Canadian Real Estate Association, and they estimate that the average home price in a place like Toronto or Vancouver is over a million dollars. So let's say you and your family, you bought your home in Vancouver 10 years ago, the average home, you sell it now 10 years later. Well, you could be faced with a tax bill of about $10,000. So this isn't just a few dollars and cents here. And Simmer, let's talk about that $1 million threshold. I mean, these politicians where I am in Ottawa, they've got these huge debts they have to pay back. And is anyone would anyone really be surprised is if that they put in this tax and then they start to lower that threshold to hit more and more Canadian homeowners? We've already seen the NDP try to do this quite sneakily, right? Remember back in 2019 federal election, they wanted a wealth tax on people who have more than $20 million in assets. Well, in 2021, they pushed down that threshold to $10 million in assets. So you see how quickly these things can change here, don't you? Yeah, for sure. Goalpost moving is their favorite sort of soccer game to play. Um, (laughs) What really, again, to stress million bucks, Vancouver area, Toronto area, I know for most of our, you know, viewers across the rest of Canada, they're thinking a million dollar home. Wow, that must be some mansion with a heated pool. No, 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 no. This is the average for a detached home. So your standard split level or your rancher in Vancouver, that is over a million dollars right now. And so this is going to nail a lot of people if something like this went through. But getting back to their stated purpose, they're saying that they want to increase affordability, that they want to reduce the price of homes and housing in Canada. Well, you know, color me crazy, but Hmm. don't add a big whopping tax onto the tax, onto the price tag, and you'll wind up uh, allowing for homes to be more affordable. But we're often asked this whenever I get an interview on this stuff, they say, okay, what's your solution, smart gal? How do we actually try to reduce the cost of housing in Canada? Well, you got to build more homes, not raise taxes, right? And how do you build homes? With hammers and nails, not with tax hikes. Um, Now, let's get back to that that price tag and this recommendation here. I mean, they are recommending higher taxes to reduce reduce home prices, but they've got it completely backwards. I mean, we know that higher taxes are not going to make homes less expensive because higher taxes make everything more 
expensive. So their recommendation here is like using a gas can to put out a fire. It's it's completely backwards. Uh, but Simmer, of course, as you know, this isn't the only time we've heard the little home equity tax birdie uh, squawking around. And that's why at the Canadian Taxpayers Federation, we put out a home equity tax calculator. You can find it at taxpayer.com. It looks at a bunch of different home equity tax proposals. And one of the things that we're really worried about here are the generations of our parents and our grandparents. They work so hard to buy that home and then they rely on the sale of their home to fund their golden years. Uh, But a home equity tax, let's say your parents or grandparents, let's say they bought their home in 1980 for about $250,000. They live in there for decades and they sell it today at about what? $1.2 million. Well, a home equity tax could cost them anywhere from $51,000 all the way up to $190,000. So that's tens of thousands of dollars that our parents, our grandparents can't use for the retirement. And they can't give it to their Gen X kids or their their next generation of grandkids in order for them to either pay for their own homes on a down payment, because they often do that to help, or pay for their educations. Like this is money that would be taken out of these families and put into the pocket of the feds. Now you were doing some math last last week on this. How much, how many days of spending would this cover? <laughs> Say they did this. Say they put through this tax that's in a study like the one we're talking about right now. Mm. Would this solve the healthcare crisis? You know, <laughs> would people join hands and sing? What would what would this money do? Oh, well, the way the prime minister is spending these days, he would blow through it in less than five days. So not even a full work week. (laughs) Wow. Okay. So they're already blowing money uh, left, right, and center, and they want to come after our money in our homes. And also young people too. Keep in mind, there's lots of young couples that have squeezed themselves into these tiny little condos. They're saving (laughs) every nickel they can of it. When they sell it, usually after they've had a couple kids, they want to put every dollar of that into the down payment for their next home, maybe one that has a backyard for their kids. So the feds are reaching their po- their hands into the pocket here. It's just absolutely unfair. So this hits pretty much everybody who either owns a home right now or is aspiring to own a home, whether it's through goalpost moving or intergenerational wealth transfer. This is going to nuke them if it goes through. That's an if, though. So how do we fight this? Well, there's a few ways, and and we have two petitions. If you're interested in joining the fight, we have two petitions. The first petition, all on taxpayer.com, is just a no to a home equity tax. Say no to a home equity tax and send your politician a clear message. Now, the second petition, it's a little bit more nuanced, and it's just as important, and that's to remove the reporting requirement. So here's what's happened. In 2016, Ottawa made it mandatory to report the sale of your home even though it's tax exempt, capital gains tax exempt with the Canada Revenue Agency. Now we're left over here scratching our heads. Why do these these CRA bureaucrats want to know how much you sell your home for if they're not going to tax it? Are they just curious? Hmm. I don't know, but I do not trust CRA bureaucrats for a minute. So sign those petitions. Now, what we're also doing at the Canadian Taxpayers Federation, we have the House of Commons. They're going to be coming back and they're going to be debating again shortly. And we're pushing every single member of parliament, whether uh, they're on the Liberals, the NDP, the Conservatives, we're pushing them to bring in a private member's bill to scrap that reporting requirement. These politicians, they say they don't want to come after our homes, but I don't trust politicians these days. So if they really want to prove that they're going to protect Canadian homeowners. They need to take action. And that action is removing the reporting requirement to the CRA. Right on, man. Thank you for your work on this. We'll keep fighting. Hey, cheers. You bet. Hi, I'm Scott Hennig, president of the Canadian Taxpayers Federation. If you've got another minute, I'd like to ask you to think about the one person you know that would really enjoy listening to this podcast. Do us a favor and do them a favor and send them a quick note to let them know about it. At the Canadian Taxpayers Federation, we believe there is power in numbers. That's why we've worked so hard to build an army of taxpayers who are ready to push back. And we did it because people like you shared our work with that one person that they knew would really appreciate taking part. Thanks for listening, and thanks for doing your part to make Canada a better place.